Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Today's subject is tied to monetary policy. Don't let that scare you. While this topic is heavy, based on some new developments, I think it's important that we dive straight into it. For decades, American Senator Ron Paul has been introducing bills attempting to audit the Federal Reserve. In 2010, his son, Senator Rand Paul, succeeded in passing a bill that was largely watered down to audit the Federal Reserve. The Fed, or the Federal Reserve, is the United States central banking system. The Fed controls the prime interest rate and can print currency at will. These are their main tools for pursuing a set of outlined goals. These goals include influencing money and credit conditions in the economy in pursuit of full employment and stable prices, regulating and supervising banks and financial institutions to ensure the soundness of the financial system and protect the credit rights of consumers. They also try to contain stability and systemic risk that may arise in financial markets. They provide certain services to the U.S. government, uh, financial institutions, foreign official institutions, and they play a major role in operating and overseeing the nation's payment systems. And these all come straight from the Federal Reserve's website. Now, the Fed handles trillions of dollars. These trillions don't come from taxpayers. No, the Fed is meant to be an independent bank. They have many different sources of income. They loan out to investment firms and commercial banks. They gain interest on government securities acquired through the open market. They also gain interest on foreign currency investments. And they earn fees received from services they render. Now getting into the origins of the Fed, the Fed was created in response to a series of financial panics. Its purpose was to avoid future crisis. In pursuit of avoiding crisis, they also have a secondary outcome. They're ex an extremely useful entity to the U.S. government. After paying their annual expenses, they have to hand over their net profit to the U.S. Treasury. In 2015, for example, the Federal Reserve made a profit of $100.2 billion and transferred 97.7 of that to the U.S. federal government. That makes them a very valuable revenue stream for the U.S. government. So all this being said, what seems to be the problem with them? Well, since the creation of the Federal Reserve in 1913, the American dollar has lost 95% of its purchasing power. As a consistent revenue stream to the U.S. government, some argue that the Federal Reserve system has eroded the discipline behind federal politicians when it comes to fiscal policy, opening them up to more free-handed spending and entering bigger deficit spending. Now that being said, while we're talking about the accountability of federal politicians, there are concerns too about the accountability measures held within the Federal Reserve itself. As I mentioned at the beginning, there was a watered down version of auditing the Fed that was passed. One of the funny things about why it was watered down is the main force lobbying against a harder audit and more transparency was the Federal Reserve itself. So they were lobbying because they feared that uh, such an audit would jeopardize their independence and politicize uh, their actions when they should be focusing on making moves that would help them reach their goals. What resulted from the watered down bill was the Federal Reserve had to disclose the names of the banks that they had lent out to. They didn't have to say the numbers that they lent out though. They also needed to disclose their own operational expenses. This isn't enough though for the critics. The Fed's critics are seeking out more significant names and numbers that are left out from the newly mandated audits. In 2008, the Fed expanded its service offerings to include non-financial businesses as well. Those are not disclosed. And what about the foreign governments, uh, foreign banks, and foreign central banks who are, are also doing business deals with the Federal Reserve? Those are not disclosed, and the critics want to learn more about those. To top it all off, the Federal Reserve is insulated from Freedom of Information Act requests. This leaves many to conclude that there is minimal oversight for an institution that uses trillions of dollars and has a major role on the American economy and the world. Going on with this, Rand Paul claims that the 2008 recession was actually caused by the Federal Reserve keeping interest rates too low for too long, and that caused the housing market bubble to burst. And we saw how badly the global economy was affected by that. If Rand Paul is right, 
then that means the Federal Reserve is failing its job to improve economic conditions. It's focusing too much on the short term and not enough in the long run. We'll have more global recessions like that since the economy is so heavily integrated across the world.